Hey, All, right. All, right. All right, we're back after our vacation, and uh, summer's uh, almost coming to an end here. We're in the middle, almost the middle of September, right? What are we at? Like the end of September, the ninth of September. Ninth of September now, Matt. Yeah. 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 yeah, and so um, those last days of summer. Absolutely, uh, at 85 during the day, 55 at night. You know, but um, as the weather changes. I noticed like a lot of different things going on with my body, so I figured I would come in and see what we could do for our fall records. Because now that the summer's over, you know, the colder weather's coming in. Yep. I know uh, working out and stuff, I feel like the, you know, the blood pressure probably is changing a little bit. You know, yeah, with the weather. Um, yeah. With the weather and eating habits, you know, now we're getting away from that barbecue yeah. stuff. And yes. Start eating better. Yes. So, you know, the stomach, helping the stomach. Not drinking as much, so the liver, then you know, work you know, out up. Yep. exactly. Go back to the gym, you know, get back into shape again. So I was wondering, if, you know, what we could do, and maybe you could tell me a little bit more. Uh, we'll start making with the blood pressure and figure out what to do with that. Sounds good, man. Yeah, yeah. blood pressure is a really uh, common problem that we see um, in our shops. One of the more uh, common uh, issues that people want to address, right. and they like to try to find some natural routes to uh, help go about this. And uh, we know with uh, when it comes to blood pressure, a really healthy liver function is a, is a really big key. Okay. Um, if everybody out there can imagine, um, everyone sipped water through a straw before, okay. how easy it is. When your liver is well, working really well and it's properly cleansed and detoxed and cared for with you know, a good healthy uh, uh, fruit and vegetable diet. Okay. And we love to use certain supplements to help support um, the liver function. But when your liver is working good, um, it's delivering clean blood to the heart, okay. and the heart's kind of like um, uh, then it's for to draw blood from the liver. Uh, so when the liver's working good, it's like sipping water from a straw. When there's uh, a problem and blood pressure starts to creep up, um, if you can imagine trying to sip uh, grape jelly from a straw, it, it becomes a, a much harder task, and the likelihood of blood pressure going up is going to be there because the viscosity of the blood right. starts to get thicker. I would imagine, yeah, I was going to say, it, it probably gets clogged up, just like that jelly, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Blood viscosity is very important when it comes to regulating a good blood pressure. Uh, probably like a mudslide, right? Kind of like a mudslide, yeah. and, and uh, we call it dirty blood syndrome. Uh -huh. But when we support liver function with uh, quality herbs like milk thistle, dandelion, uh, turmeric, and acetylcysteine, which is an amino acid, right. this gives our liver the, uh, the horsepower and energy to pull these toxins and pathogens down straight to the gut for removal. Oh, and wow. it's going to allow the blood going to the heart to be cleaner. Right. So a prerequisite for healthy blood pressure for all of us is a, is a very healthy functioning liver. Okay. And that's going to supply that good blood to make the heart's job of distributing oxygen rich blood around the body easier. Okay. And step two is, uh, is all about the arterial relaxation. And one of the key minerals that most people out there are probably taking right now is magnesium. Okay. And magnesium, as people know, comes in a, a variety of forms. Right. Is too much magnesium not good? Uh, the reference range we like to stay with, man, is usually about uh, four to 500 milligrams a day. Okay. And uh, the, the best delivery systems for the heart are generally known as glycinate, taurinate, and fluoride. Okay. And they're all found in one formula. And uh, with over 300 functions performed by magnesium in the human body, you can see the importance of it, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's about relaxing the hose, it okay. relaxes the artery wall. So if you can imagine you're, you're cleaning the blood that's going to be going through those arteries, and now we have more relaxation in the artery network to carry that oxygen-rich blood out. So that's a great way to help normalize uh, 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 blood pressure issues when our systolic and diastolic numbers start to creep up. Maybe we should say something that that's Release the pressure because that's what creates high blood pressure is all that pressure of the blood trying to flow through every stiff artery. Right. So that's it's pushing back on that. So if you make it more flexible, it makes it easier. It makes a lot of sense. And it's called oxidation, right? Okay. When we're in our fourth decade of life, fifth decade of life, and so on, there's more oxidation. Yeah, no, I see. More inflammation that hardens and strains the artery wall. Yeah, magnesium is a great way to help protect from that and keep the arteries uh, flowing nice 
And one of the uh, key components that we like to complement with the magnesium is an uh, increase in the molecule called nitric oxide. Okay. Something that we have plenty of in the first two decades of life, and it starts to decline thereafter. So improving nitric oxide levels, which um, can be done in a number of ways, but one of my favorite and most successful ways is by using um, beetroot extracts. Okay. Beetroots are fantastic. You know, it's funny, I was listening to the radio. I know we got you on some of that right Absolutely, now. it's great. Let me yeah. tell you something else. Yesterday, people had had so much energy. Go talk to my buddy George at the Walking Encyclopedia. <laughs> and he will tell you exactly what to do. <laughs> yes, I went down. I had to take my wife. I had to be up in Robert Wood early yesterday morning. Then I went to play nine holes of golf. And then I played pickleball. Beautiful. You know, came home. Yep. You know, sat down. One of the big benefits I see myself um, in using the beetroot extracts, that nitric oxide level will stay high for about 24 hours. So it's really supporting a wonderful circulation. And when you get more oxygen rich blood to our brain, to our working muscles, the body's working with less effort. And if you don't have the energy to go play your golf, to find that type of energy for a good workout, uh, to have the creativity, for, uh, for whether it's reading a book or uh, a home project, right. you can always feel better when that oxygen-rich blood stays right. nice and high. So, you know what? As I got older, I started to slow down and, you know, yep. felt sluggish. I always had to do what they do. Yep. You know, I, I, try and, oh, I'll sleep more. No, that's not the answer. You know, I'll, I'll try and eat better. Okay, well, that helps, but yep. that's not the answer. Good <laughs> eating you know? habits are, uh, are definitely real important. And, and it gives us the, uh, the good uh, energy, the fuel that we need to get through the day, but with uh, paying attention to a healthy liver function and a, uh, a healthy arterial network with the magnesium and a, and a very healthy and safe way to raise nitric oxide. It's a fabulous way to help us in a good position, to have good cardiovascular health overall, and reduce some of these key risk factors associated with, uh, with heart uh, problems. One of the biggest risk factors is high blood pressure. So, yeah, for sure, uh, one of our favorite go-tos, and, and I think a lot of our audience is probably familiar with Ubiquinol, right. or CoQ10. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's another favorite of ours right. to help normalize and uh, support a healthy blood pressure as well. Right. And it comes with a molecule that people aren't used to hearing about. It's an acronym called PQQ. And okay. that's a great way to expand the number of mitochondria little energy factories we have right. in our heart cells and in our uh, skeletal muscle. So the more mitochondria, it's going to be like um, having extra furnaces to create energy. Right. So you're just like uh, when your furnace at home works good, right. the house heats up yeah, or the air conditioning works good. They know it's working good. Yes. So years ago, you used to have to shovel the coal into the furnace, right? Yep. And now it's all about the quality of that coal that you put in your furnace. Be good quality. We, we now, through uh, some of today's modern science, have the ability to expand these, these uh, uh, little energy factories that we all have. And like we mentioned with nitric oxide, mitochondria populations start to dry up from our mid 30s on. One of the reasons that people who are uh, fitness enthusiasts, they don't run as fast when they're 40 versus 30. Sure. And uh, expanding those mitochondria will help you have a better endurance base, better stamina, and, and uh, battle mother nature and age better and more gracefully. That's what we want. Absolutely. So we enjoy our activities every day. Absolutely, because I know there's a lot of people yeah. over in the community who live up there that, you know, they like their pickleball, they like their shuffleboard, they like their bocce. Oh, and, look. And they want to keep going. Tennis, I mean, I, I saw a few people playing tennis, you know. Uh, most likely. And we tell everybody, if you've got a body, you're an athlete. Yeah. And Absolutely. we want to make your move through space right. better. Absolutely. Yeah. Does, does bingo count? <laughs> bingo, after the workout. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I do love pickleball, though. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Very competitive. I said, everybody says pickleball. It's pickleball. I tell them, look, I said, once you play, you'll be hooked. I yes. said, and every competitive bone in your body comes out when you start oh, playing. Oh, it does. It, 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 it works your reflexes, yeah, it, it's really good. different movement patterns. Yeah, yeah, everybody who hasn't played yet, go pick up a yeah. rat and try, give it a yeah. try. Yeah, it's <laughs> a lot of fun. It really is. So, we covered a lot of stuff here. Uh, 
uh, so far in, in this program. We covered uh, our liver, we covered our gut, we covered our blood pressure. Yeah, I don't think we got the gut covered yet. Oh, we didn't yet. get the gut yet? Yes, okay. not yet. All right, see, I'm getting all right. What do you have for my memory? <laughs> <laughs> you need something for my memory. We'll talk about that. <laughs> uh, that's true. We didn't. We didn't. All right, so we've been talking about a lot about the liver because uh, people don't realize how important the liver is. But another part of that is gut health, right? That's yeah. correct, man. I think your whole immune system, from what I've read, it started, it starts in your gut. Yes, it does. You know? Yep. And uh, just because you have a bigger gut doesn't mean you have a better immune system. That's right? correct. That is correct. That's a good okay. one. Yes, I like that. You know, some people might think, oh, well, I, I have a big gut, so I, I have a great robust immune system. Immune system. Yeah, yeah. I can fight off anything, but that's not the case. It, it just means that we need to get you eating better and exercising better, which uh, over the pandemic, I put on a couple of pounds, and thank goodness it's starting to come off. It may not look like it yet, but you will see. <laughs> it's, I'm going in the right direction. But yes, we are. So yeah. tell us a little bit more about like, a, a healthy gut. All so right. A, health, a healthy gut is generally about what we call the microbiome. You know, one of the interesting things about the human body, we have uh, 10 trillion human cells wow. in the human body that make us up. Yeah. Our cell and muscle, our right. nervous system, our organs. Right. And But what's fascinating about that number, 10 trillion human cells, there's 90 trillion human bacteria wow. that we have. And there's going to be good, and bad. bad, and neutral. Right. And what we try to do with a healthy uh, gastrointestinal tract is make the uh, good flora shift up in a good ratio. Um, okay. Our science community feels an 80-20 rule is what's considered a good gut. Okay. About 80% good bacteria, 20% is going to be a little bit bad, yeah, right. and then there's some neutral versions in there. Okay. So we love to use um, probiotics right. that are going to be very diverse. And, and you know, let's just stop right there or yes. because I know a lot of people that are watching Probiotics. Well, I, I can eat a container of yogurt. I got my probiotics. Yes. Right? <laughs> there might be three or four strains in that. Right. And um, fermented products are not the most ideal way to get your good bacteria up. Right. Um, we want to use our fruits and vegetables as prebiotics right. to grow the good flora indigenous to our gut. Okay. All right. So um, uh, we talked about diversity a lot. Um, the science world right now is getting into probiotic formulas that are going to be between 60 and 100 wow. strains okay. and they're very specific for genders of women and men okay. and we have them also for antibiotic recovery okay. in a little okay. elevated um, amount of what they call colony forming units right. you might see the um, acronym yeah, CFEs the abbreviation there right. um, on your bottle so we want to see diversity your probiotics should be covering the entire length of our GI tract, which uh, people out there are fun fact, uh, the gut is 30 feet long. <laughs> so it's a lot of real estate to cover. Yeah, sure and there's a lot of communication that takes place between these these um, friendly bacteria and our brain. And um, also the friendly bacteria in our gut and a good immune response to unhealthy um, bacteria or viruses. Right. We're trying to stay away from okay. So the gut is very, very much responsible, like you said, Maddie, okay. for a, uh, most of our immune system, right. about 80% of the immune system. Okay. And it's known as the second brain because it's going to drive that good memory we want. Right. People come in all the time yeah, for uh, memory boosters, and they are very helpful. Okay. Yeah, whenever we can raise key neurotransmitters like uh, acetylcholine and dopamine from memory, right. it's going to help. Like, Without going after the gut, it's, we're going to get very minimal results. Okay. Uh, we put that good, diverse probiotic in there, and we, we always want a good formula should have at least 60 strains. In it. And we're going to have a percentage for the small yeah. intestine and a percentage for the large. Okay. The small intestine is where about 90% of the human body's nutrient absorption takes place. And the large intestine and colon is where the waste leaves the body. Okay. So, so I, I guess we should touch a little bit on, uh, I know a lot of people have issues like can't eat seeds, oh, what you get for? And, you know, a lot of different things. Yeah, yeah. with diverticulitis yeah, um, or diverticulosis if it's not a flare-up. Right, you know, I yeah. they'll double over in pain, you know, 
God forbid they have a poppy seed bagel. Right, yeah, yeah, it's going to be very painful. You know, that, and that's an area of the gut that we talk about is, it's about the gut barrier. It's the lining of the GI tract. Right. So we want to improve the microvilli and the lining of the gut wall. So when we look at doing a uh, gastrointestinal program, it's really twofold. It's about elevating the good biota, the good bacteria, right. the diversity and, uh, and strength. And it's about supporting the gastrointestinal wall. Okay. We, um, we love using um, the amino acid L-glutamine in a powder form. Okay. And it's complementary with these healing herbs like slippery elm and marshmallow and uh, a formal licorice that doesn't raise blood pressure. Hold on no, a it's the marshmallows on your hot chocolate. Oh, count. that doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> talking about marshmallow of the earth. Right. Yes, marshmallow of the earth. Right. So we're doing that. We're able to heal the gut wall and also uh, improve the microvilli. This is going to benefit people with Crohn's disease, celiac, sprue, a very common uh, uh, disorder, IBS. People might get this with food sensitivities. A lot and more of that, more and more. Yes. You know they, they have, I don't know if they've done studies, maybe they have, but I bet you a lot of that is because they've been involved in putting into these processes. Yeah, the processed foods are the number one culprit, um, and soft drinks. Yeah, a lot of soda, yes. it's called beverage. Yeah, we want to try to get people steered away from these types of uh, uh, problem causers or, um, you know, uh, it, they're, they're troublemaking food. Yes. yes. Troublemakers, yeah, yeah. and um, by improving the gut wall and the right. ecosystem, now we have the best opportunity to have better nutrient uptake and better waste removal. And that's going to address people with sluggishness as far as occasional constipation. Oh, okay. okay. Yep. So, why don't we talk a little bit about uh, cholesterol and um, circulation and cholesterol, how that affects circulation more it doesn't really allow the circulation to happen. They know we were just talking about right. the flexibility of everything. Now, right. how do we keep that cholesterol down so that we can make that blood flow even better? Yes, and uh, Matt, it's a good question. And uh, uh, elevated cholesterol is a big topic in our store uh, on a daily basis. Um, there's natural ways to go about uh, regulating and normalizing your cholesterol. And you need a certain amount of cholesterol. People need to know that. Right. So uh, a lot of folks are uh, um, under the, um, I think, assumption that all cholesterol is bad. Right. I know there's a couple of different kinds, right? There's yes. Those, you always, you get some, people get so confused. But even myself, HDL, LDL, you know. It, yep. There's HDLs and LDLs, and then there's um, the LDL particle size, right. what we're interested in. And, um, a certain amount of cholesterol when it's uh, in a good healthy ratio that you might see on your on your blood work from your doctor. Right. If the ratio is good and we got an HDL um, surfacing maybe between 50 and 70, that's a really good marker. Above 70 is wonderful. We see that a lot with our, a lot of our uh, ladies right. tend to have a higher HDL. So the, uh, the high density lipoproteins are very good and it, they tend to help escort the small particle size of the LDLs out of the arteries, so it's less damaging to the artery wall. So it's the LDL that you don't want to like, you want the HDL. Yeah, I mean, it's, the, it's really the uh, small particle size. Okay. And when a doctor does a particle size test, they're looking at the LDL specifically. Right. And if the majority of the LDL is big fluffy beach balls, like we call them, Okay. With a big larger variety, right. they don't damage the artery wall. It's the tiny little um, uh, smaller daggers that get in and scar up the arteries. Right. What are they all like pumped together, I guess? Yeah, it's kind of like it's kind of like a uh, more razor blade type uh, of an effect on the uh, endothelial cells, the artery wall. So that's what causes a lot of the plaque to form. So we need our good cholesterol to make our good health, healthy hormones in the body that help us feel, feel strong. But we want to have the right ratio. Right. And we're going to show everybody today a, uh, a healthy route on right. how to arrive with that good ratio. Sounds good. Yes. And, the, and the, so that test that the doctor gives you, we don't have to study for that. Do we? You don't have to study for the test. Okay. No. That's good. Now, you usually should be with, your, with uh, an annual physical or oh, okay. um, your CBC blood test. Right. I was going to say, they probably yes. do it for a blood test. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You don't have to study for that.
uh, good cholesterol is again about our our all our buddy here, the liver. Right. Uh, your, our liver is um, center stage for good hormonal balance, and uh, most importantly, overall cardiovascular health. Okay. So one of the problems with improper ratios of that HDL and LDL is a uh, fatty liver. So we want to support our buddy uh, and, okay. and make sure that the liver has the necessary energy to work with to get healthy. Right. You know, raw fruit like apples and uh, melons and dragon fruit and wild blueberries are so healthy for our liver. So are our vegetables like right. asparagus. It's so hard to get that, that stuff. Sometimes you need that supplement because who can go buy these organic? You go to the grocery store, you look at the produce department. Yep. Got a, for example, you might have a, a I don't know, a, let's say an eggplant, you know, regular eggplant is 99 cents a pound, 99 cents, where I'm thinking three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Inflation, the eggplant might be $1.99 a pound. Yep. Then you go look at the organic one, it's like, here's a mortgage application. Because that's how much it's doing. True, yes. You know, yes. It's, it's really it causes hard. up pretty high. Yeah, yeah it is crazy. Yep. You know? well, we, we definitely want to focus a lot on, uh, on a good organic fruit and vegetable emphasis right. and utilize our natural supplements to help uh, to help uh, clean the blood go into the heart again. Right. And um, herbs like milk thistle, turmeric, dandelion, right. uh, the trace mineral selenium, right. the amino acid and acetyl cysteine. So we can get all that all in one different supplements, right? All, all in one. All in all one, yeah. That's great. Yeah. That can definitely save a couple of bucks. And now we're now we're starting to clean the blood that goes to the heart. And one of the uh, problems with mysterious high cholesterol that people find themselves with is a fatty liver. We want to make sure that we're cleaning it up right. and uh, staying hydrated with good water, uh, emphasizing more organic raw fruit and vegetables throughout the day. Sure. I think that uh, people can have a little goal of having one or two pieces of fruit prior to each meal and work out really good. Right. And yeah, I remember you telling me that uh, years ago, uh, that you should always eat the fruit first. Yes. So that that's in there because if you eat it, it's going to ferment. It's good so, food combined. Right. Fruit wants to absorb real fast. Fruits, the um, out of our foods, the number one way to detoxify the liver. Okay. And it's going to supply the necessary antioxidants. And your liver is looking for the glucose from the fruit to drive toxins and pathogens downstream to the valve okay. for removal. And that's consequently cleaning the blood going to the heart. Right. Again, that's going to translate into a healthier cholesterol ratio. It's very funny how you see some people who eat this whole big meal and then all of a sudden they're pretty fruitful. Yes. Yeah, yes. Opposite, just the opposite of, of what they should be doing. And that's a recipe for, uh, you know, making, that's a recipe for uh, causing a little bit more gastric stress. Right. You know, immediately following the meal, right. and we want to make sure we're absorbing what we're eating. Feeling bloated too afterwards, and they're like, "Oh man, I ate too much." Yeah. Like, well, you ate too much of the wrong stuff at the wrong time. Yeah. So everybody watching fruit first. Fruit Not Twenty first. minutes before you eat, That's or two it. hours after you eat. Much better food combined. Right? Right. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. You'll be more comfortable. Too. And you will have more energy after you eat. You won't be yeah. sluggish on the way down. Absolutely. So after we look at doing the liver cleanse, we want to focus on raising specific en enzymes in the body. Um, the one enzyme you always look at, um, folks out there may not be familiar with coenzyme A. Coenzyme A is uh, elevated by a nutrient known as panathene. Panathene is a nutrient that's so valuable for regulating um, and normalizing triglycerides and supporting a healthy HDL and LDL ratio. Okay. So panathene is a water-soluble nutrient it's the active form of vitamin B5. It's never toxic to the body. And a dosage of about uh, 450 milligrams taken twice a day okay. is in line with the clinical studies on regulating a healthy cholesterol count and normalizing triglycerides for our customers. Right. Hey, it's very, uh, something you just said was very interesting. Studies, okay, clinical studies and things like that. We haven't done years ago on a lot of the supplements and everybody would think that, oh, you can't take that, you know, right. it's not approved. Okay, yes. but now that more and more studies are coming yeah, out. Yeah, the Journal of American Nutraceuticals, Matt, yeah. has so many great uh, studies on human aging now and on, and on some of the big health issues that 
uh, the bulk of our population is interested in, such as cardiovascular health, immunity, and uh, healthy digestive systems. Uh, so yeah, we, we really rely heavily on today's research and validating the amounts uh, that are studied and what raw materials are used. Right. to help get these good results. Yeah. So we want to use good trademark raw material ingredients right. as well. You made a lot of great strides in, you know, people educating people as yes. you know, better things out there than a prescription man and getting, you know, something that's over the counter or pharmaceutical. You can yep. yourself natural. We want to show people these natural routes that are uh, work in uh, in synergy with the human body. Right. and they're not putting a, a stress on the body. Right. It's about working in concert and making sure we have um, the proper ingredients, the proper raw materials to stay in good balance right. for, what, for whatever protocol we're zeroing in on. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think there was one more item that you wanted to speak about. Yeah, when it comes to, we talked about um, the LDL particle size a little bit, right. and um, that's very important. So we want to try to shift that particle size towards the big fluffy beach ball right. ride and stay away from the, uh, the tiny little razor blades sure. that are the uh, the small LDL particles. Right. So when we go for our blood test, you can always request from the lab to do an, an LDL particle size okay. to uh, figure out what type we have. And using ingredients like plant sterols. Plant sterols are um, uh, fatty acids. They're, they're really good fast. They're different than omega-3, but they really help elevate the uh, LDL particle size to be the bigger, robust kind, which are uh, not damaging or a lot less damaging than the arterial wall than the smaller kind. Yeah, I'd rather have a beach ball for my <laughs> They bounce off the arteries versus these little daggers. Absolutely. So that's the key with using plant sterols and um, a form of niacin known as um, uh, no flush knives, some people might uh, know it as, but usually there's a, a blend of these two ingredients right. to help support that healthy LDL particle size. Cool. So with this uh, landscape that we just talked about, right. we're going to address uh, normalizing triglycerides, right. lowering the total cholesterol, supporting an elevation in HDL, the so-called good cholesterol, right. and improving the LDL particle size. Right. And all that would actually help with the blood pressure, right? And that'll help with the blood pressure because when the blood viscosity is not as rich in these unhealthy lipids, the blood moves better from the heart to your distal areas, which is your brain, right. fingers, toes, and then returning through the veins to get more oxygen to the lungs. Okay. And then this, the process continues to right. the arteries. Right. So um, yeah, it's gonna, when you start to normalize lipids and a healthy cholesterol ratio, it's going to have a big impact on uh, healthy blood pressure right. and uh, also reducing our risk factors for overall for all the cardiovascular events that we're trying to avoid, right. whether it's uh, an MI or a heart attack, stroke, blood clots. We want to reduce these factors. Sure. And keep us playing uh, yeah. playing the game out there. Absolutely. Playing your golf or you pick a ball about you, whatever it is yes. that you want to do. That sounds good. Is there anything else that we can add? Um, I, I think a good micronutrient supplement as a, as a foundation is very important. Um, I like using um, companies that have a lot of range in them and we look for nutrients in their most updated forms. So I look for multivitamins to have methylated B vitamins and macro minerals from plants and trace minerals from water. When we can have that, that's what we feature in our shop. Right. We're going to have the best impact overall um, on the way our body performs every day and the way that that can impact the healthy thyroid gland okay. and adrenal system to right. give us more energy during the day. Uh, sounds good. Right? Sounds very good. So that's the foundation we use behind these programs. Right. Very good. Very good. So we talked about our gut, we talked about cholesterol and all that stuff, but I think. Another important issue, um, just we were talking about intestines and all the issues that go along with that. I know a lot of people, uh, oh, just like the toilet paper commercial, they don't really enjoy the gum. You know, uh, they have a yes. problem with that. Yes. So maybe we could uh, maybe talk a little bit about that, you know, constipation and, and stuff like that. Yeah, so 
Yeah, we can maybe resolve on um, yeah doubts of constipation or a sluggish bowel sure. that people might encounter. Um, uh, again, the diversity of probiotics is very important. We like to look at when, they, when people look at the back of their probiotic and see the bifido content. Okay. Uh, bifido is the um, primary strains that work in the large intestine and colon. We usually like to try to get about 15 to 30 billion colony forming units of the bifido bacteria. And um, alongside that probiotic ratio, we like to use products that hydrate, hold more water, more moisture in the bowel. There is a form of magnesium known as magnesium hydroxide. And it's, don't confuse it with what we talked about for blood pressure or cardiovascular health or central nervous system support. This magnesium is all about drawing water into the colon okay. and helping us have an easier transit time to move our bowels every day comfortably and easily. Oh. And it's, it's a product taken at night. Uh, it's, it's usually a one capsule a day dosage, an hour before bed. I'm sorry. I'm laughing <laughs> to myself because you said have an easier transit time. They should probably give that to like the public transportation system. So gives them an easier time. Yeah, maybe less, less delays. Yeah. Less delays, all that stuff. Less you delays know. for all right. commuters out there. Gotta give yes. them a little bit of that magnesium. Yes, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Reduce the commuter time. But yeah, magnesium <laughs> hydroxide with the right bifido content should resolve um, uh, sluggishness when it comes to mild or even severe constipation. It can really Very make good. a big difference with that. Yeah. Yep. And I'll tell you, a lot of people probably, we're making a joke out of it, but it's a, it's a serious yes. issue for people. And, um, definitely uh, something to look into. And drinking enough water, yes. staying hydrated, and um, we always come back to those fruits and vegetables right. and how important they are. Yeah. Uh, one of the uh, key culprits behind constipation, again, we, we harpen on uh, the health of our liver, right. but a fatty, sluggish liver is usually the root cause, along with a, uh, uh, a low content of the bifido bacteria in the gut. Right. And the proper amount of hydration in the colon. Okay. So we try to address all three of those bullet points. Right. To it, all, that. it all comes back to your liver because that, that's really it's doing a lot of work. Yes it is. Really is. Yes, people it is. Don't, I don't think people realize how much it's doing. Oh I tell people every day our liver is the big brother right. of the heart, the cardiovascular health, the big brother of the pancreas. Right. for proper oh, blood sugar balance right. and the big brother of the kidneys right. to regulate our electrolytes and minerals. So um, yeah, the, the liver uh, kind of runs the show. Yeah. It's very important. I think uh, maybe next time, uh, for next week, we'll touch on, I, I know a lot of people, since we're talking about the blood, blood and all this stuff, I think maybe we should talk a little bit about diabetes next time. Uh, you know, you might like. Natural remedies yeah. for diabetes. Yeah, we can touch on that and show people ways to improve their insulin response to glucose right. yeah. and um, and how to improve the health of their pancreas and, and good pancreatic function right. moving forward. Yeah, that sounds good. Well, you yeah. know what, George, it's been a pleasure spending the, the last 30 minutes. You know, every time I come in and, and I get to pick up some stuff, we usually have a kind of chat like this. And before I know it, time flies by. But you know what? Well educated and you learn a lot and it helps, you know, it helps the body function better, you feel better. Oh, and, uh, it's been a blast. It's been fun, man. Yeah. We love sharing the information with everybody. Thanks, George. Uh, my pleasure.